Hello everyone, I am Brian Ralston and I am going to spend a few minutes with you today talking through a Bible passage. I've really uh, missed teaching the Bible live to uh, those of our church family here at Centenary. So we're going to do something a little adventurous here. We're going to spend a little bit of time in just a couple verses of the scripture. So if you would open up your Bibles to Matthew 11, 28 through 30, it's going to be on the screen for you and you're going to hear it read in just a minute by the oh so gifted Ben Aquina. But follow along your own copy of the scriptures if you would please and it's Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So this is a, an amazing scripture verse. It's been a favorite of mine for many, many years. But during this recent uh, situation over the last couple months, it's become even more special because I think I've experienced it in a new way. And maybe you have too. Jesus was talking to a group of people. If you read the context of this, it's pretty fascinating. He was talking to uh, Jewish folks in the first century who were living under a great burden of they were never good enough. They constantly had to work harder and harder to try to please God and to try to be perfect. The Jewish law was such that they had so much uh, effort to put forth just to be good enough to be close to God. And thus their work never ended and their burdens were very heavy at trying to keep that Jewish law. If you read the context of this, right after this, Jesus deals with the Sabbath. And he talks about the, the joy that should be in the Sabbath and how it's become such a huge burden on God's people. Right before this, Jesus is actually doing a prayer of thanks in which he's saying to the Father, thank you for hiding this truth from those who think themselves wise. In other words, the religious leaders who were imposing that burden of law keeping to the umpteenth detail and revealing it, Jesus says, revealing it to those who are childlike in their faith. So he's just got done praying that when he, when he recites these, these verses, when he comes to verse 28. And it's thus, it's so special to me that Jesus in the midst of this situation is addressing people that are burdened heavily, maybe like you are now. I don't know about you, but it's been a lot of work the last couple months. We've had to do things that we haven't ever had to do before, like clean every single surface and disinfect grocery bags that are coming into your home. And even some people I've heard are wiping down their mail and things like that. Just situations we've never had to do before, uh, acts of work we've never had to do before. So those of you who are working from home, it's been an incredible transition and burden to try to work from home. Homeschooling children, even caring for children, has become a lot more work because you don't have any of the help you may have had before with preschool or other relatives or friends helping you. So life has become burdensome. More and more work has been heaped upon you. I don't know about you, but when I get to verse 28 of Matthew 11 and Jesus says to me, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. I identify with that. Life has become a lot more difficult than it was before. And I think we're starting to really identify with those in the first century who would have heard this word from Jesus directly in person that day when he spoke these words. I don't know if you feel this way, but weary, overly burdened, never getting enough rest physically, never getting enough rest emotionally, and even spiritually sometimes, without being able to recharge church, without being able to recharge your batteries with Bible studies, with your friends and church family, missing that may have caused weariness as well. So if you feel that way, follow along with me as we study together this passage. Even if you don't feel that way, follow along with me as we jump into this passage today. Jesus is saying to us, come to me, all of you who are weary, bone tired, beyond exhausted. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. That's an interesting phrase for him to say, because what he's saying is those who uh, were trying to keep the law perfectly, uh, not just God's Old Testament law, not just the Ten Commandments, but the hundreds and hundreds of regulations that have been added to that. Because again, remember, the Jewish hierarchy by the first century had added hundreds of limitations and regulations and rituals that the people were told to follow. So Jesus is saying, for those of you who are trying to do that every day, and it's just wearing you out and you're carrying that heavy burden, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. And notice the personal nature of this. Jesus is saying, I will give you rest. 
That first word rest there means kind of a physical re recharge, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a deeper level of rest than just a nap. He's gonna give you rest for your body, your mind, and that, that first word, we'll get to another one in a little bit that means a little bit more spiritual, but this one is physical rest, emotional rest, mental rest. So Jesus calls us to him in verse 28, and then he says in verse 29, let me teach you, in other words, let me show you the way, learn from me, is kind of what Jesus is saying here, take my yoke upon you. Now the word yoke is not familiar to us, but it was an implement used to harness two animals together so that the master could better work the land, work the field, whatever he was trying to do. A yoke involves two animals. So what Jesus is saying is, you've been trying to carry this burden all by yourself. You've been trying to do this all in your own effort. You've been trying to keep the law perfectly, keep all the Jewish rituals and, and traditions perfectly, and you've been trying to do it in your own strength. That's not possible. That's why you're so worn out. Take my yoke, Jesus is saying. In other words, join with me and the two of us together will be yoked together. And interestingly, when you study this concept, they always, they always put two animals together. One was more experienced and kind of knew what to do and knew what the master wanted, knew what the routines were. And the other was younger and less experienced, inexperienced. So Jesus is saying, I am sort of the senior partner in this arrangement. Take my yoke, he says, join me in this. And he says, because I'm humble and gentle. In other words, compared to those in your culture who are oppressing you now with this burden and putting this impossible burden on you, no, I'm not like that. I'm humble, not arrogant. I'm gentle, not prideful, and not gonna be mean to you and tell you you're not keeping the law and, and fine you and all that kind of stuff. He's saying, take my yoke upon you Join with me because I'm humble and gentle. And I love the end of verse 29. I will give you rest for your soul. Did you notice the will? This is a promise. Jesus is saying, when you follow my ways, when you walk in grace, not law, when you join with me in the reality of grace to please the Father in this new relationship of love and the new covenant of grace, when you do that, you will find rest, not just for your body, not just for your mind, but for your soul. And that kind of deeper rest, which is gonna be an eternal rest, it's kind of the beginning of the promise of heaven, that we will find God's rest, a rest that we will not uh, run out of, or it is not limited in any way. Jesus is saying in a very significant way, when you let me teach you, when you follow my ways, when you're willing to do it my way, and join with me in the yoke I will provide, you will find rest for your soul. That's a really amazing reality, to fall back into that, that grace where it's not try harder, it's just rest. Now understand, there is still work to be done. Jesus is saying there is a yoke. This is not sit back in your spiritual lazy boy and go on a pleasure cruise. No, the Christian life is still gonna be work, but unlike following the law, it's going to be work motivated by love, not work motivated by obligation. There's a major difference in doing work that you enjoy, that you take delight in, and that you're not alone in. Jesus is gonna be with you every step of the way and showing you the way. That's the kind of reality of the Christian life. To live in grace, to walk in this kind of partnership with Jesus in this amazing reality. And later we know he promises the Holy Spirit to come and help us as well. That's even more helpful. And I love the fact that Jesus is saying this to people who are overly burdened, weary, and exhausted from trying too hard. Because I think we can identify with that, especially during this current reality. And he's, he's talking to people who were never good enough. And he's saying, it's not about being good enough, it's about being associated with me, who will fulfill the law and prophets, who will bring you to a new reality of grace and love, and you can be partnered with me in this new covenant reality Take my yoke, join with me, for I am humble and gentle, and I will give you rest for your soul. And then finally in verse 30, the reality is, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, because you're no longer gonna be alone in doing this. You're gonna be with Jesus, and you're in the reality of grace, not the reality of law, and you're in this beautiful relationship, partnership with the Holy Spirit as, as your lead, as your helper, with Jesus as your friend as your Savior and Lord, and with God the Father being the master of all 
and directing your steps. This is an amazing partnership that is important for us as Christians to remember because I don't know about you, but sometimes church, we got lost in doing so much for Jesus that we forgot to be with Jesus. So we gotta, when we get back to the realities of church, take advantage of this opportunity to be resetting ourselves and rekindling our understanding of what this verse is telling us. So especially right now, if you're at home, if you're feeling overly burdened, if you lack rest, if you identify with the people who would have originally heard this, it's time to, to rest. It's time to go to Jesus and understand that he will take away that burden of work and obligation and never being good enough and never doing enough and he will give you grace and he will walk with you as you learn to walk with him. So today, take a minute to deepen your connection to Jesus. If you've never prayed to him, then I encourage you to do that. If you are a regular follower of Jesus, then reconnect with him. Use this opportunity you have during this COVID crisis to draw into his presence. We're not doing church right now, so we should be able to be closer to Jesus through this. So today as we close, would you pray with me? God, I do thank you for this opportunity that we have during this season. It is an opportunity as well as a problem, Lord, because right now we're not able to do church. So help us to understand that it's time for us to reset ourselves, to follow you more closely, to understand that you're saying these words to us as well as to that original audience, to come to you, all of us who are overly burdened, those of us who are weary, and you will give us rest. Rest from trying harder and doing so much where we're never gonna be good enough. Lord, help us to remember that that's not important right now. What is important is for us to take on your yoke, to walk with you, and to understand that you will always give us rest for our soul when we seek you. Help us to follow more closely. In your name we pray, amen.